this time, I would like to present to you the world's youngest ordained minister and the world's youngest evangelist, Marjo Gortner. That was Marjo Gortner. He started out as a child preacher in the late 40s. Ever since Marjo was a child, he was taught the tricks in the trade of scamming church people early on by his parents. He was used by them for this sole purpose. Marjo eventually grew tired of preaching and stopped in his teens. He later resumed it as an adult. Marjo's conscience started to bother him and he had later decided to expose himself and other fake preachers that are scamming the church. There's, there's one guy that gets into it so heavy that he's into, he prophesies and he told me how he did it. He sat right, I mean, he looked right across the table back and forth at me and, and, and he told me how, you know, how he confiscates money. He says he's on, this station is over 40 states and uh, he'll go on there and he'll be, get on the radio and he'll say, I know that listening to my little voice tonight that there's some lady out there and you've got $10 put away in a cookie jar. Now God spoke to my heart and told me to go and tell you to get that $10 and get it in the mail and send it to me and God will bless you. God will give you a reward such as you have never known before. And then he comes back to me and he tells me, he says, if you're on the radio and you're going over 40 states and you're on at prime time, you've got thousands of people listening, the chances are that there are at least two or three hundred little old ladies who've got a ten dollar bill in a cookie jar and so if you even get you know if a couple hundred go over and get it and send it to you that's two grand that you've made just like that i want you to get out the largest bill that you have right now if you believe if you don't have that much faith then you shouldn't come down anyhow even young people anyone who wants to come down if you want to believe for someone in your life i want you just to give us a twenty dollar bill is the largest bill you got but i want you to get that out if it's a ten i want you to get that out if it's only a dollar bill, I want you to get that up. But I'm asking you to prove God with whatever the largest offering that you have tonight. You know, you don't you don't get meetings or you don't get booked back unless you have a gimmick. Or as the, the evangelists say, it's a it's a, a ministry. Like the, it's incredible. They'll say, Oh, brother so and so, he's got the ministry of laying on of hands or he's, or he's got the ministry of prophecy. But that's a gimmick, and the guys that have the gimmicks get the big meetings and do good. And I mean I used one time, I had a thing where there's a special kind of ink you can buy and you put it on and with perspiration when the salt starts to come out and you start to perspire, uh, it'll turn red. And so I painted a cross, you know, I just did a cross like this in my head. And while I was preaching, uh, the cross started to show immediately, people started nudging each other, you know, and of course it started, it went away, I think after a while, it only lasts so long where I wiped away, I don't remember. But afterwards, I mean, like I had that whole audience at one of the biggest meetings that I've ever had because they saw that cross and said, oh, Brother Marge, while you were preaching tonight, the cross was over your head. I mean, that was convinced them, you know, that it was really very, very real and it made it very easy for me to uh, take offerings. Send out your magazine, the magazine, you show pictures of what you're trying to do and then you raise dollars for uh, projects, mainly what you, the projects you do, like they raise money for missionary projects, say to go to Haiti, but they'll take in tens of thousands of dollars and maybe only spend a few thousand. So you work that as a business, then you follow up. So we ask how much he'd get for Haiti in a month. And we were told in one month, for example, $350,000 in a month. When in fact he was only sending down two to four thousand. Uh, from your magazine and your radio, you used to build and you go into one or two night crusades and auditoriums. And the crusades, uh, you don't plan in the auditoriums, you don't make a lot of money from this, but it makes the personal contact. But the main money comes from uh, the magazines and from. Uh, the radio uh, program, you know. And, but that's like a thing you've got to stay in it all the time. It's like the ones who are successful, they're just, they're businessmen who are constant. They're like, you know, they're like Madison Avenue uh, PR men. God's got this. Jesus. Say it again, Jesus. Jesus. In the name Jesus. of Jesus, brother. Be loose. Be set free right now. That's right. Say Jesus. Just say Jesus. 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 There's the experience where you say you're saved, then there's the fire baptism when you get the Holy Ghost and that's the tongues thing and they love to work people over you've got to like shoot in on this when you see people gathering around people and start laying hands on and praying with someone you've got to like come in with the camera too it's very important because they'll be laying hands on someone and the poor person will be saying you know thank you Jesus now this is a person that's 
already saved, but they're getting the baptism. And someone will be standing there going, you know, and the poor person will be standing there and they're not saying anything. Then after a while, about four or five more will gather around and they'll start doing the same thing. You know, come on, speak it out, speak it out. Until all of a sudden, the person will, you know, get so overwhelmed by the thing that they start going, you know, and the next thing, you know, oh, that's it, you've got it. Like they feel good, we got another one, you know. Then they'll go on to the next person. Once you get one or two, once that you get one or two that really come off and say, yeah, I really felt that you know, I had a bad back, I had a bad leg, then there's a whole slew say, oh, yeah, I feel better too, because like 90% of it's psychosomatic. I feel better. Yeah. <laughs> there would be, you know, gestures like when I would say Jesus, my arms would have to go out, or when I would say the devil, I would go forward, and she had this incredible set of signals. There, like if she would say, oh, Jesus, if I was going too slow. Or she said, glory to God, you know, that meant you better speed up and go a little bit faster. Then later on, they came up with more signals like praise God meant, you know, you've got the people where you need them. You better take an offering and raise some money. <laughs> I can't really think of a time that I ever believed in God or in, you know, and I've ever thought that it was a miracle of God that I preached. I don't think even with all the people uh, gathering around me, you know, thousands of people saying this has to be a miracle. Surely, you know, God has called you and all that. I don't think with all that, I just, you know, knew that I could do it well. And my parents had trained me, but I never really tripped out and thought that I was some uh, real miracle child of any kind. Oh, God is so real tonight. If you can't feel the Holy Ghost tonight, man, you're dead and you don't know it. I don't know how much came in. As far as I can guess, maybe about $3 million from the time I was 4 to 14. And I have no idea what happened to that money. I know that I never saw it or I never got any piece of it for my education or anything. It's going in and out of the two lives. It's, you know, I just don't want to do it anymore. What can I say? Sometimes I feel like I should get up and do repentance to the audience or something, you know. It's, like I have these fantasies. A lot of times they go through like I'd really like to get up and uh, just tell them what I really think or where, you know, where I'm really at or what I'd like them to do. Then when I get up, you know, I go right into my sermon. But things like this relieve my head at the time, but I've been playing with that now for a couple of years, and I just can't go on doing it like that anymore. Well, I did it for about 20 years of my life, and I gave it up because I didn't want to go telling people that they were going to burn in hell and preach about fire and brimstone for the rest of my life. And uh, so I moved over into show business, which I find very close to religion. Marjo Gartner! <laughs> All the way around, up, all the way around, let's go. Come on, Henry, hope. Oh. Good boy, Henry, good pussy cats. Get around here, come on, hold it, hold it in there. Everybody hold it, thank you. The terrifying tale of man fighting for his life against an ecology gone berserk. Marjo Gortner. <laughs> H.G. Wells, The Food of the Gods, for a taste of hell. Scum like you think you can get away with anything. Push people around when you want to, steal when you want to, make fun of men who have to work for a living, huh? Not today. Hey, come back, you guys. I was only kidding. Hey. Hey, don't do that, man. Oh! 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 Not like back in the store, is it? We've just survived an attack of the most powerful weapon in the entire galaxy. No one can survive these deadly rays. I'm no longer useful at this time. <laughs>